My name's Rich and today I'm going to be showing you how to cook a lovely dish called Alsatian Chicken. Um, this um, is a, quite an easy recipe to do and it's inspired from the Alsace region of eastern France which borders on Germany. So the ingredients and the methods very much um, cross both borders there. So now I'm going to show you how to do it and what you need. So for this Alsatian chicken you're going to need roughly 600 grams of chicken thighs, some new potatoes that's to serve with later, a savoy cabbage, four carrots, I've already chopped one of them there, some German style sort of hot dogs, some sh shallots, I'm going to be using four of those for the sauce later on, some double cream, a bottle of Riesling wine, preferably from the Alsace region of France but I couldn't get it today so this is a German one. Um, some bacon which I've already half cooked there, um, two small chopped onions, some thyme from the garden, some four juniper berries and four cloves of garlic chopped up with some bay leaves. So the first thing we've got to do is we've just got to fry off some of these ingredients before we start making the main pot. So I'm putting all the bacon into the frying pan here along with the onions, the carrots and the garlic. I'll save these babies for later when we're in the main pot. So you just want to gently turn it down a bit. You just want to gently fry these off just to take those flavours out. Um, all the ingredients are pretty easy to get hold of to be honest and you can be creative. I mean I've got this recipe from a few um, recipes I've read and some things I've seen as well and I've just kind of adapted it to what makes it um, easiest to do. Um, there's lots of great recipes from that part of France, it's very very overlooked um, and I, if this is a bit of a success then I'll think about maybe doing some more recipes that I know from that region and putting them on my channel. Now that the um, onions have started to soften I can smell the flavours coming out from the bacon and the garlic. I'm going to take that off the heat now. And what you need to do next is you need to transfer those ingredients into a large oven-proof casserole dish. So this is a cast iron one, it's German funnily enough, and it's a bloody good one. It's um, seen me many good dinners this has. So I'm just popping all that in there, and that's just going to go to one side for it. Just spread it out evenly across the bottom. The next thing we need to do is prepare the actual chicken. I'll just move that out of the way. Now to do this, you're going to need a cabbage. And you there we go, making a noise as usual. I've got chick boneless chicken thighs here. You can use any piece of chicken you want really, but I think this has got the best flavour. Um, you can also use um, game meat, so pheasants, any sort of gamey bird. And that's I think traditionally what they would have had, because chicken was very much seen as a luxury back then in the old days when this was a sort of a farmhouse favourite. So I've got my chicken out there and now I've got my savoy cabbage and I just need to peel this. And for each thigh I'm going to wrap them in cabbage. Like so. I'll just do the one for now. There you go. Chicken there in the cabbage. Let's roll that up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my little parcels and I'm just going to line the, the top of the bacon and the carrots and whatnot in a layer there. I'm going to do that with the rest of the chicken. Now I've wrapped all my chicken thighs and I've put them on top of the under layer there of the bacon and the onions and whatnot. Now I've done that, that's a fun bit. Golden rule in cooking, never use a wine you wouldn't drink. So I'm putting... I've, had to try a bit of um, the rising there, a bit of quality assurance, um, and then I'm putting the best part of a whole bottle in on top. It won't cover everything, but it, as you cook, it will cook down. What you need to add then as well, the thyme I got from my garden, shove that in there, and a few bay leaves. And then the juniper berries as well. Put, put too many in there. Just use about between four and six. 
make sure they're all in the liquid so it can reach the flavour and of course seasoning salt and pepper there we go so it should look something like that and then swish it about a bit and we're going to cook that in an oven 180 for the next hour and a half so I've preheated my oven it's going to go in now now I'm going to pass a bit of time cheers so this has got another 10 minutes or so to go but just before um, we take it out for good we want, we want to just warm the sausages through and give them a bit of the flavour so I'm just adding those now and you can put as many or as little of these as you want I only put a couple in but if I had loads of people around for dinner I'd probably put more than a couple so they're in there this is what it's looking like plenty of juice though which we're going to make into a nice wine sauce but yeah another 10 minutes and we should be on to the next step So while the sausages are just warming through, I've just cut some new potatoes in half and some baton carrots. I, I leave them quite chunky because I think it's quite nice to have something chunky with this dish. Um, you can have whatever you want with it really, green beans, um, asparagus is really nice with this, so that's another one you could go for. Um, but yeah, anything you want really, just as an accompaniment to the main. Um, what I need to now prep, prepare is I need to prepare the shallot which are going to go in the final um, white wine sauce. It adds a bit of sweetness to the dish. Um, so yeah, four shallots I'm using for this. Um, so you just try and as finely as you can chop these into really small pieces. They're quite fiddly though, you have to have some patience. Um, but yeah, these just add like a nice sweetness, which goes really well with the wine in the sauce. So I just chop them about like that. Not fine, fine, but not so much you're chomp chomping away on them. Like so. So the sausages have been in for about 10 minutes now, so they're probably ready to come out. And as is the chicken wrapped in the cabbage. So you have to fish them out and put them to one side. That looks absolutely gorgeous already. Um, so yeah, if I just get some tongs, just keep them to one side to let them rest. Um, but really importantly, just try and keep as much of the um, juice as you can. So they will fall out of the little parcels, but it doesn't matter too much. Just get these, pop them to one side. Come on, pop them smells, guys. Right, so what we're going to do with this now is we're going to sieve, put that all to one side. We're going to sieve the big bits out of the sauce so we can make the sauce. So just with a See it there, sieve, sieve over a bowl. Let's do it here quickly. Sieve that out. Really important to keep as much of that juice as you can. Because we're going to use that to make the sauce. And these bits we can put on top to garnish. So now we're going to make the sauce. So in a large pan, you want a large knob of butter like that. We're going to put that in the bottom of the pan. We're going to make a roux. So basically roux is just, well, not that, split that actually, split that if it's too big. So roux is the basis of all sauces really. Um, and that's just, butter, melted with a little bit of flour and then you continue adding whatever you want to add to it. So I've put this on high to get it going. 
once the sauce is actually starting to be made, we'll turn that down a bit. I'm just going to little by little add tiny bits of flour to that melting butter and keep it moving so it doesn't burn to the bottom pan and so it doesn't go lumpy hopefully. Once you've done this a few times you kind of tend to find your own way of doing it. Um, but yeah, I use one of these cheap little whisks here, I find they're the best. That's it, that's starting to thicken up now. A bit more. And as that does, I can start to add a little bit more flour, but not too much. Just sprinkles of it. And again, keep it moving. That's it, it's starting to form now, and it's starting to bubble. So now I'm going to add these shallots I just chopped up and get them coated and get them slightly softened. They don't take long though. And they're starting to get nice and buttery. So I'm going to leave them just for a moment to heat through. That's it. And then they'll start to break up a little bit more, which is good. And then this is what was at the casserole dish, which is going to be the sort of stock. So just gradually add bits of that in, you can hear that. So we can make a, we can start to reduce it down. Oh, that's lovely, now. that's really coming into a sauce. A bit more. And you see it start, starts to thicken. Those, those aren't lumps, that's actually bits of shallots. That's really getting nice and thick now. And just keep gradually adding little bits of stock. Carrots and potatoes are starting to steam along nicely now as well. And this is thickening very nicely. Now this has got all the flavours of the bacon and the wine. Wait. <coughs> Probably poured it in a bit too quickly that. You just want to gradually do it and sort of it won't be thick thick but you'll you can feel a bit of resistance on it. That's it. And that needs to now reduce for a few minutes. So the sauce is nearly reduced now. I'm reducing it down to about a third of what it was in terms of the stock which came out of the casserole dish, um, just to release the flavours and get rid of some of the excess moisture. Um, the important thing to do now is not to boil it. So you want to turn that down to quite a low heat and just take some of that heat out and keep it moving, um, which is a bit tedious, but um, it's quite relaxing to do this on a Sunday. Um, Normally, I cook a traditional British roast dinner, um, or I'll go to a friend's for a roast dinner, but it's usually always a roast dinner. Um, but very occasionally, I'll do something else, but it's usually something which isn't, you know, straight, it's not putting a pizza in the oven, it's something I get to cook. But when there's not many of you eating, you don't really want to get a whole joint of beef and pop that in the oven. So I'm doing this, and it's a bit different. And this is the first time I've ever done a YouTube video properly. So, um, so yeah, so that's now down to about a third. And I, as I said, I took that heat down. Now I'm going to add the cream. Just put that on there for now. And the important thing about not having it boiling is you don't want it to curdle. So just little by little, keep that moving, get it all mixed in in a consistent way. That's it, lovely. I don't think I'm going to need all of that cream, so just watch your measurements. And I'm just going to really keep that warm and warm it through. Um, just make sure to season it. Just a bit of pepper and a bit of salt. And it's on the, the lowest heat I can find now, so that's, that's going to just warm through nicely now. Um, 
You might be thinking this is not very authentic. Well, no, it's not authentic. If I wanted authentic, I'd have the pleasantries of being actually in the Alsace and having this cooked for me. But I like doing stuff with the ingredients that you can get hands on, really, and try doing different stuff other than the usual meat and two veg or whatever. Um, so, yeah, if I was in France, I'd be getting all the stuff locally sourced, obviously, but this is what I could get at the supermarket. So, nothing wrong with that, in my view. I'm not claiming to be a chef, I'm a cook. So, right, so I'm just going to warm that through for a bit longer, which I don't want to bore you with, so, be back in a bit, little while. And now we're all ready to serve. So, just put the chicken in the cabbage on the plate and then I usually have me a few veggies with this like I said earlier asparagus would have been good and some potatoes sauce you can have as much or as little as you like this is sweet kids should like this but it's more I'd have this more for a dinner party if I was doing a themed night and the sort of thing I'd do so there you have it Alsatian chicken cooked by me Rich hope you enjoy it if you do please like subscribe and share and I'd really love um, some suggestions of other things to do um, below in the comments. So thanks very much and see you next time.